Well, hey guys, it's Michael here again. Uh, in the last video you guys probably saw, I introduced you to a new project I had, the TRX 300 Honda Quad 4x4. And um, it's definitely been an awesome machine having it around here. But I want to talk a little bit about this video, and really it's that time of year again, firewood season. So I've been hauling some firewood, and I was just going to show you guys the usefulness of the quad truck again, and kind of how these two machines differ. Just because I have this doesn't mean given up on the quad truck by any means matter of fact this is kind of my go-to still almost all the time yes i could get a trailer for this thing but i got tight woods around here and turning a trailer around in tight woods is not easy this thing you can back around it steers sharper than this thing this thing scrubs and pushes a lot more and you try to steer in tight trails and this thing just steers more effortlessly so like i said this is kind of my go-to whenever i need to haul almost anything the racks are just more functional for that kind of stuff too but anyways, um, besides the point, uh, I did need to just do some brakes on the back of this thing still. And I got those, but I actually need to get some tires. And I want you guys to leave a comment down below what you think about tires and if you know of any good affordable ones that hold up really well and they're good for mud. Um, I've kind of had my eyes set on the Kenda uh, Bear Claw tires. Um, I've been really happy with motorcycle Kenda tires and I think they'd probably be great for this and they seem to be pretty affordable. And they look like they're good mud terrain tire, but if you guys have any suggestions if you like those or dislike them leave a comment down below or some other tires you might suggest um oh another thing i want to mention uh, at the end of this video i have a little update on the predator 212 engine swap motorcycle and i got a bunch of parts in i just haven't had time to put them in yet so if you guys stick around to the end of the video got some updates on parts and pieces and kind of a timeline when i'm going to hopefully begin those put in there and a little bit of dirt bike ripping in the end of the video. So stick around, check that out as well. Um, back to these things. Yeah, this video, I'm just kind of hauling around some firewood. You guys are gonna get to see a log splitter I built about three, four years ago. And there'll be a link in the video to a three part series on that, building the log splitter. But just hauling firewood around and someday I might get a trailer for this thing and it's great. It's a good functional vehicle. It starts and runs great. It's got a lot of torque. But I still find myself using the quad truck mostly for almost everything. It's just uh, more versatile. It's got the roll around toolbox on here and you can throw your saws and all your wood in here and it works really well. I see this thing being more useful for hauling logs out with the log arch out of like the deep woods or up super steep inclines. This is only two wheel drive so it doesn't get the best traction trying to get through brush. This thing definitely by far gets better traction. But um, like I said, the quad truck, it's really hard to beat. I really think the quad market years ago before side-by-sides came out they really blew it they missed the mark on these things only uh, other quad or actually it's a six by six that i know of i have an old one a friend gave me it's broken down now it's the uh, polaris big boss and it's got a truck rear end on it and it's pretty useful but the bed's a lot smaller than the quad truck and it's a lot higher up and it's a pretty good little vehicle but it pushes really hard if you got a 400 pound load in the back of it and this thing hauls it and steers a lot nicer so Anyways, if you guys are interested in the video, stick around and check it out. Well, it's that time of year again. It's the fall, trying to get all my wood cut up and put away in my woodshed before it starts going crazy with the rain, monsoon season. And uh, just running these things around, hauling some firewood and using a log splitter. And just kind of talking about a little bit of difference between the quad truck and the 4x4 quad here. Well, as you can see, that little six and a half horsepower motor has its work cut out for it. To be honest, though, it's probably putting out about eight, eight and a half. I modified it with a bigger cam, shaved the head a little bit, and put a different carb on it. But it does pretty damn good. It's not, uh, you know, it's a CV transmission. It's not shiftable or anything. It's just variable speed, and it does pretty good. But it uh, hauls around, you know, four or five hundred pounds around my property pretty well. Between the four x four quad and the quad truck, they just have slightly different applications. Uh, my son likes riding around on both of them. 
but it's one of those things if I'm gonna haul like table saws and generators and welders around it's definitely gonna be in this machine it just gets me around a lot better with all my tools uh, the racks on the 4x4 quad aren't as useful because they're just tubular steel stuff seems to slide around on them a little bit more All right, you guys, if you've seen any of my other videos, you probably already know I'm a big fan of these six and a half horsepower motors. They're 212 cc's, they're lightweight and affordable. And that's actually what's powering this quad truck right now. And I put another one on this homemade log splitter I built a few years back, super reliable. And if you watch to the very end of the video, you'll see a Honda XR100 I ended up installing one of these 212 cc motors on. You'll see it rips pretty well. And I got some updates on that mini bike as well. So stick around and watch to the very end of the video. Alright you guys, so this log splitter I built about three years ago and also made a three-part YouTube video series on it. Uh, so click on that link if you're interested in checking that out. It might be helpful for you, even if you don't build your log splitter exactly the way I built mine. Uh, it's one of those things I had to do a lot of research on pumps and valves and fittings and I kind of give some information where to find some of those parts and pieces for good prices. And I had to do all the research on that, so I figured I'd share the video and help anyone else out that might be building a log splitter. You could find some useful information in there. All right, you guys, like I said earlier in the video, I got a little update on the Predator motorcycle um, project. Anyways, I got a box of parts here and I just gotta get some time to put them in. So hopefully in the next few weeks I can get some time and install them. I got a stiffer uh, rear spring for the torque converter. Got some nice parts in here. It's been a little while since I got these and haven't looked them over too much. High performance cam. A very nice looking billet connecting rod with uh, bearings as well. Oh, 
I also got uh, some stiffer springs for the clutch to make the clutch engagement at a much higher RPM. And some stiffer springs for the valves. And in this box I have, uh, well it comes with a little thinner head gasket to bump up the compression a little bit. This is a pretty damn nice looking part here. Because I had a lot of people concerned about the flywheel. So I got a billet flywheel for this thing and it seems like a very very high-end part for this machine so there it is so in the next few weeks hopefully I'll get these parts in and we can uh, check it out and see what the top speed is with all these parts included on here but um really really high-end parts I was pretty damn surprised with what this kit came with so it's a stage 2 kit so hopefully soon we'll get them installed All right, you guys, thanks for checking out the video. If you like it, hit like and subscribe. Until next time, take care.